Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 17. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Google Next, here from our Palo Alto studio. Help, happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, Udi Nakmani, who is the head of public cloud at Ubuntu. Udi, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, pleasure to be here. All right, so, you know, I, I think it goes without saying anybody that kind of, you know, understands the landscape, wait, there's cloud, uh, there's Linux, and especially Ubuntu, um, you know, that's going to be there. Uh, be, before we get into some of the pieces, just tell us a little bit about your role there uh, and, and inside the company. Sure, I've been with Canonical for about three years, and um, I head up our partnership with um, the public clouds and, and the public IaaS providers as uh, as a whole. That yeah. includes Google, AWS, Azure, and many, many others. So, so can you just clarify one thing for us? You just yeah. said Canonical, you know, I introduced you as Ubuntu, you know, yeah. which is it, how should we be referring to these two? Uh, <laughs> well, we are, we are very well known for our product, yeah. less well known for our corporate brand, and we're very happy with uh, with both names, <laughs> so. I usually um, introduce myself as Udi from Ubuntu, yeah. slash Canonical, so right. we're used to that. <laughs> uh, totally understand. All right, so so public cloud, give us you know your view on kind of the landscape today. Uh, we want to talk specifically about some of the Google stuff, but you know yep. what's happening, and you know what are customers coming to you for public cloud? Uh, you know where does your suite play into that environment? Sure, I think so. Ubuntu is is a very popular OS, and I think um, probably the most popular. The area where we're most dominant is public cloud. So a large majority of workloads on Google Cloud, Azure, uh, the Linux part of Azure, AWS, and many, many other providers is running on Ubuntu. A lot of um, a very high visibility services actually develop on Ubuntu. Um, and we have responsibility in that. We need to make the Ubuntu experience uh, predictable and optimized for that cloud platform and have people uh, trust that experience and, and, and believe in it. So that's our job on a technical level. And then on the second level, our job is to um, really help um, users access support and, and tooling on top of that to help them with the operational reality. Because I think what we see, um, and this you've probably heard this before from Canonical, what we see is it's great that the um, licensing cost, the cost of software has gone down. That's great news for everyone. However, what, what a lot of people don't realize is the cost of operations has gone up, has skyrocketed, right? Uh, it's great that Kubernetes is open source, but how do you actually spin up a cluster? How do you deal with this architecture? What does it mean for your business? So that's where we increasingly focus on private and public cloud. Yeah, uh, it, it's funny. I, I did an interview with Brad Anderson a few years ago, and I'm like, ah, customers are complaining about licensing costs, and he starts ranting. He's like, licensing costs, you know that licensing is 6% of the overall cost of what you have. Yeah. So look, we understand operations are, are, are difficult, so why is that such a strong fit? What what do you bring, You know, what customers does do, do you serve uh, that, that, that they're choosing, choosing you uh, in, in such a large preponderance? I think the two things we, we do well, one is we're very well embedded in the industry and in the, in the community, and pretty much where people are developing something exciting, they're developing on, it on Ubuntu and they're talking to us through the process. So we, we get a very good view of their problems and challenges as well as our own. Um, and the second thing is is we have come up with, with tools and frameworks to allow a lot of that knowledge to be crowdsourced, right? So a good example, is uh, our uh, model operation, modeling, op modeling uh, platform Juju, where um, you can very easily get from not knowing anything about, for example, Kubernetes, um, into a position where you have a Kubernetes architecture running on a public cloud like Google, or in another public cloud, or in bare metal, right? So, so because we we tackle that, we take, we assume that somebody's done this before before you, somebody's figured this out, take all that knowledge, encapsulate it in what we call a charm, and take that charm and build an architecture on Juju, on the canvas, or through the CLI. Okay, maybe could you compare and contrast? Google, of course, has some pretty good chops when it comes to Kubernetes. Uh, they're, they're really uh, trying to make uh, some of these offerings really as a service, so, you know, what does Google do? What do you do? How do they, you know, work together? You know, are you actually partnering there or are you kind of, you know, just in the community both working on things? Right, so Google is is in this uh, in two different ways. One is they have their own managed service, GKE, yep. uh, and that's great. And I think people who are all in on Google, and that, that's probably a good way to go. You get the expertise and you get 
uh, the things that you need. Our approach, as always, is uh, cloud neutral, and, uh, and we do believe in a hybrid world. Um, we are members of the CNCF. We're silver sponsor of the, of the CNCF. We're very well embedded in the Kubernetes community, um, and we do ship a pure upstream Kubernetes distribution that we also sell support for. So we work very closely with Google, in general Google Cloud, on making sure Ubuntu runs well um, on GCE. Um, and on the other side, we work very closely with the Kubernetes community and that ecosystem to, again, make sure that um, it becomes very easy to, to, to work with that solution. Yeah, Udi, you know, Every player that you talk to uh, in the ecosystem gives you a different story when it comes to kind of multi-cloud, uh, you know, environments. Uh, Google's message tends to be pretty open. I mean, obviously, you know, with what they're doing with Kubernetes uh, the, and being their position of where they are with kind of customer adoption, um, they understand that a lot of people that are doing cloud aren't doing it on Google's cloud, so they want to make it, you can live in both worlds and we can support it. Mm -hmm. I listened to Amazon today, they're like, well, the future's going to be, you know, we're all going to be there, we're going to hire another 100,000 people mm -hmm. throughout of all Amazon in the U.S. in the next 18 months, uh, and, you know, Microsoft is trying to wrap their arms around a lot of their applications, IBM and Google are there yeah. doing their thing. You've got, you know, visibility into customers in all of these environments due to your your place in the stack. What are you seeing today? Um, you know, I guess you know how is Google's adoption going? Is one question I have for you. And two, most customers I would think are running kind of multi-cloud, if you will, is the term. Is is that what you see? How many clouds are they doing? What are you seeing? Kind of shifts in there. And I I know I asked you like three different questions there, but maybe you can dig into that and unpack sure. it for us. I think in terms of what the at least top three clouds are um, are saying, I think it's more important to look at what they're doing. Um, if you think about the AWS and VMware announcement, if you think about Azure Stack from Microsoft, um, I think those are clearly admissions that there is an on-prem story and there's a hybrid story that they feel they need to address. They might believe in a world where everybody is happy on a public cloud, but they also live in reality. Yeah. We're, we're at a public cloud show. We're not, we're not allowed to admit about on-prem, right? And next, next you're going like to mention OpenStack. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, not for me. <laughs> and then uh, in terms of Google, I think the interesting thing Google is doing, and Google are, are, are clearly in that, uh, even in terms of size and growth, I think they're in that top three league. Um, they are, in my impression, is they are focused on building the services and the applications that will um, that will um, attract the users, right? So they don't have this blanket approach of you must use this because this is the best cloud ever. They actually work on making very good specific solutions like for big data and for other things. And Kubernetes is a good example that will attract people and get them into that specific part of Google Cloud Platform and hopefully in the future using more and more. So I think they, they have a very interesting uh, more product-led uh, approach in that sense. Okay, so you, I you think I answered one question. You, 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 yeah, you touched on kind of you know yes, customers have public and on-prem, yeah. so you know kind of hybrid, if you will. What about public cloud? You know, most customers have multiple public clouds in in, in your data, or are, are they uh, tending to get most of it on, on a single cloud, and you know might having a second one for for some other piece? Yeah, I think right now what we're seeing is a lot of um, a lot of people using perhaps a couple of platforms, right? Especially if, if they have certain size, uh, I'm putting you know things like sovereignty and, and, and data privacy aside, but just in terms of public cloud usage, they might again use a specific platform for a specific service. Uh, they might use uh, bare metal servers on, on software, for example, and, and VMs on other cloud, right? So they, people are, by and large, the savvy users do understand that, that a mix is needed. Um, which also plays to our strength, of course, like with tools like Juju and Landscape, we allow, we allow you to really solve that operational problem um, w while being really substrate agnostic, right? And you don't have to necessarily worry about getting locked into one or the other. The main thing is you can manage that and you can focus on your app. All right. Udi, what, what's the kind of top couple of things that customers are coming to you at these shows for? Um, you know, where do they find themselves in engaging with you as opposed to just, you know, they're the developers, they're, they're, they're leveraging what you're doing? Sure. I think, so the one thing that I mentioned before is, is, is operations, right? I've heard about big data, I've heard about Kubernetes. You know, what are my options? Do I hire a team? Do I get a consultant? Do I spend six months reading about this? Um, and they're looking for that help. And, and I think Juju as an open source tool 
and conjure up as, as a developer tool that's also open source, really um, really expand their options in that sense and, and, and make it much more, much more efficient for them to do that. And the second thing I'd say is um, Ubuntu is, is obviously very popular in public cloud. It's popular in production. So production workloads, business critical workloads. And more and more organizations are realizing that they need to think long and hard about what that means in terms of getting the right support for it, in terms of um, things like um, like security. Like an example, this week there's a kernel vulnerability in Linux distros. I don't think it has a name yet. Um, and we have something called um, the canonical uh, live patch service, which patches kernel vulnerabilities, you can guess by the name. Uh, now, people who have that through our support package have not felt the thing through this vulnerability. So I think we, we start to see more and more of these uh, where people have a lot of machines running on different substrates and they're really worried about their uptime and what a, uh, a professional support organization can help them do uh, to maintain that uptime. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's real interesting times. Uh, being a company, you know, involved in open source, involved in open cloud. Um, I, I want you to react. There, there was a quote that Vint Cerf gave uh, mm -hmm. at the Google event. I was listening, they had a great session, Mark Andreessen and yeah, Vint Cerf. Yeah, it was uh, it, 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 it Go there. Um, there was actually room if you, if you got in, uh, but uh, I, I, I was glad I, I got up there and Vint Cerf said, we have to be careful about fast leading to instability. You know, mm. what's, your, what's your take on that? I, you know, I hear when I go to a lot of these shows, it's like, wow, yeah, I used to go from 18 months to six months to six weeks uh, from my deployments and public cloud will just update everything automatically. But you know, that speed, you know, can, as we were just talking, security mm. is one of the issues, but you know, there's instability. What, what, what's your take on that? And how are customers dealing with this, you know, increasing pace of change, which is the only constant that we have in our industry? Yeah, that's very true. I think, <laughs> so from conversation with customers I've had recently, um, I've had a few where um, they've been sitting around and, and really deliberating what they need to do with this public cloud thing that they've heard about. Um, and that, you know, trying to buy time eventually might lead to, to panicking. Um, so a big financial um, institution that I met maybe a month ago are, are trying to move all into AWS, right? Uh, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing for them, whether it's the right thing for them, I don't think that discussion was necessarily uh, necessarily took place. It may may well be the best thing for them, uh, but it's the kind of um, it's the kind of um, they're rushing into that decision because they took so much time to try and understand. On the other hand, you see a lot of people who are much more savvy um, and and understand that in terms of the rate of change, like you said, it's a constant. So you need to take ownership of your architecture. You can be locked into uh, one box that solves all your problems. You need to make sure you have the operational agility and you're using the right tooling um, to help you stay nimble when the next big thing comes along or the next little thing, which is sometimes just as scary. And I think that's where, again, that's where uh, we're very, very well placed and we uh, that's where we can have very interesting conversations. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Actually, I just published a case study with Citi uh, talking about, uh, you know, they use AWS, I would say tactically would be the way to put it. Um, they build, you know, they have a, a number of locations where mm -hmm. they have infrastructure. Speed and agility, absolutely something they need as an outcome. Um, public cloud is a tool that they use at certain times, but not, there, there are things that they were concerned about and how they build their architectures. Want to give you the last word? Um, you know, we see uh, you know uh, Canonical Ubuntu at a, at a lot of shows. You're involved with a, a lot of partnerships. Uh, what, what do we expect to see uh, from 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 your cloud group, uh, kind of over the next six months? What should we be keeping an eye on? I think so. On the private cloud side, we've been doing some great work into the telco vertical, and I think you'll see us expanding into more verticals like financial services, mm -hmm. where we've had some, some good early successes so recently. Can you ask, is that like NFV related, which was the kind of the top discussion point that uh, I had at OpenStack Summit last year, uh, was around NFV, is, is, it, tel is that, that specific? Space, or, yeah, that, it, yeah. It, yeah that, that's an element of it, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's about how do I make my private um, cloud um, economically viable as AWS or Google or Azure would be, right? Mm -hmm. How do I free myself from from that and enable myself to move between the substrates without uh, making that trade-off? Um, so I think that's on the private cloud side, and I think you're gonna see more and more um, crossover between the world of platforms and switches and servers and the world of devices, web-connected devices. We just finished MWC in Barcelona last week. 
Uh, I think we're in the top um, top 13 or 14 brands in terms of visibility, way ahead of most other plat most other OS platforms. And I think that's because our message resonates, right? It's it's great to have five million devices out there, but how do you actually ship a security fix? How do you ship an update? How do you ship an app? And how do you commercialize that when you have that kind of size of fleet? So that's a whole uh, different kind of challenge, uh, which again, I think with the approach we have to operations, I think we are already there in terms of, of offering a solution. So I think you're gonna see a lot of um, more activity on that front. And in the public cloud, I'd say it's, it's really about continuing to work ever closer with the bigger public clouds so that you have um, optimized experiences um, on Ubuntu on that public cloud, on your public cloud of choice. And you're gonna see a lot, of, uh, a lot more focus on support offerings sold through those clouds, which makes a lot of sense. Not everyone wants to, to uh, buy from another supplier. It's much easier to get uh, all your needs met through one centralized bill. So that's, you're gonna see that as well. All right. Udi Nachmani, really appreciate you coming to our studio here to help us with our coverage of Google Next 2017. We'll be wrapping up day one of two days of live coverage here uh, from the SiliconANGLE Media studio in Palo Alto. You're watching theCUBE.